Hi guys, and today let's make a dice tower. And to start with we're going to need a few rectangles of foam core and a base to stand it on. And we're going to assemble a nice cube of foam core. And this is going to be the basis for our tower. And going to go for a simple kind of three tier tower. So there's three bits that the dice will knock off as they fall through. And you want to mount these at about 45 degree angles. And if you want to, you can blend them in at the top. And now that we have the interior done, make sure it works. Next, going to get some thin sheets of styrofoam. This was for insulation boarding and going to cut it into equal sized pieces to the foam core walls. Then we're going to roll some texture on using a tinfoil ball and go in with a sculpting tool, bump the speed up to five times and carve a bunch of brickwork in. and repeat for each face of the wall. And then glue to the foam core tower. Now we have some gaps at the edges, so we're going to be very lazy and take some balsa wood strips and glue those into place. You could alternatively use larger pieces of styrofoam here, make kind of chunkier bricks to make up the edges, but I did not feel like doing that today. Next we're going to take some offcuts of styrofoam and make some rocks for the base, and just make it a bit more uneven. Build up the kind of rocky bluff that the tower would be stood on. This is a great time to use any kind of spare smaller bits that aren't really going to be any use anywhere else. And then expand the size of the base because your eyes you made it too small. And this has the added benefit of making it a bit taller and giving us a bit more surface area to play with on the base. Next we're going to add a platform on the back of the tower that we can use to stand our dice on. And then get some styrofoam bricks and glue them over the top to hide the seam with the foam core and the styrofoam. I then took some more balsa wood, cut it at 45 degree angles and used that as supports for the back side of the platform. And give the tower another test, need to make sure it still works. I then decided that it all looked a bit too boring and linear, so I took a knife and I carved out the corner of the building. And going to use this to add some wear and tear onto the tower. And make sure you bevel the other side as well, so it doesn't look like someone's just taken a knife to it. I then took a chunk out of the front where I want there to be some kind of ivy and moss growing out of. And then mixed up a batch of Skelter Mold.
and give a nice coating of sculpt mold all over the base, as well as on the brickwork where we want to hide the seams between the brick and the wood beams. And we'll also use it to blend the base together and cover the cracks where it's expanded. Next we're going to mix up a basing paste. So this is a classic formula of basing flock, PVA, and some black gesso. And mix together until it's all nicely blended. Then apply all over the base. And you can use this to add some dirt texture, as well as blend the rocks into the base. And also applying on the edge of the stone where it's crumbled away. And that will again blend the seams together between the styrofoam and the foam core, and make it look a bit more natural. Then, while the basing paste was still wet, pushed a few rocks into it. Then, giving the entire thing a coat of black gesso. Then, once that's dry, we're going to take a mid brown and give the entire thing a coat. After the brown, we're going to mix up a grey and go over the stonework. as well as any of the stones that are visible poking through the base. Then, with the tan colour, we're going to go in and pick out a few bricks. Just picking out the occasional brick, and do the same technique with a slightly more orange paint on some other bricks as well. Then, with that tan paint again, just with a very light dry brush, go over and blend everything together and dull down the different colours of it. And use the same colour on the woodwork as well. And with a slightly heavier dry brush, go ahead and hit the base as well, just picking out the dirt and make it slightly more earthy toned. And then, once that's completely dry, go in with a white dry brush and just pick the very top details. Next we're going to apply some static grass, so very sparingly, put some PVA on the very bottom of the base. I find the sculpting tool slightly better for putting PVA on the base because you get more of a kind of patchy covering with it, which seems a bit more natural. And then going in with the static grass applicator. And as always, don't touch any of the metal bits while the tool is live. And even when it's not live, they can still have a remaining charge in them. So, don't ever touch the metal bits. 
Next, mix up some green flock with some ground up clump foliage and PVA. We're going to make a nice slimy foliage that we can apply all over the stonework. And mainly putting this on the corners as well as using it to blend the base together. It's a pretty versatile slime. You apply it anywhere and it dries to look like foliage. So you can use it for bushes or ivy, moss or pretty much anything. It can be a bit of a pain to apply though. But the tower still needs a few details. So taking some more pieces of balsa wood, going to make a covering for the entrance and just gluing them in with hot glue. And adding some banisters onto the top platform just to stop the dice falling off the wrong way. And that's just going to be a few more strips of balsa. And get rid of any cobwebs left from the hot wire as well. Then, the platform is still a bit too uniform, so with a pair of clippers, we're just going to pull away some parts of the balsa wood, where it's rotten and fallen apart. Then, to add to the rotting wood effect, we're going to take some green paint, water it down quite heavily, and apply it around where the planks have split. And we want quite a translucent paint here, so it is more of a green stain on the wood. And if you apply it too thick or too heavy, you can go in, just put some more water on your brush, and then go over where you've already painted while it's still wet, and that will help spread it out and dilute it. And you can also put it on the stonework, where it will seep into the gaps between the stones and make that kind of algae and moss that's growing between them. And then, because I really like how the kind of ivy effects have come out so far, mixing up another batch of the clump foliage and the green flock and applying it over where the new balsa wood has been added. I'm still experimenting with the kind of foliage slime, but the green flock has kind of a fun effect. It makes it look a bit like it's flowering or it's got leaves on it. And then adding a few choice tufts onto the base. And ideally we want to keep as much of the area in front of the tower free so the dice can freely roll through. And there we go. One overgrown stone tower that is also for dice rolling. But anyway, thanks for watching guys. Catch you next week. Just gonna do one final test. Oof. Maybe it's not so good.